look at it. Just see how it glints and sparkles. It is a nucleus and focus of crime. There have been two murders, a vitriol throwing, a suicide, and several robberies brought about for the sake of this 40 grain weight of crystallized charcoal. It's a bonny thing. The Blue Carbuncle by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The winter of 1889 was bitterly cold. After dark, the stars shone stark and bright in a cloudless sky, and the breath of the late-night Christmas shoppers blew out into smoke like so many silent pistol shots, while their footfalls rang out crisp and loud. But for all the inclement weather, there was a sense of collective goodwill in the air, as if the people of the capital had agreed to lay aside their differences and petty squabbles for a few short days, and unite in celebrating the season of forgiveness. Support the mission, won't you, sir? Warm Christmas meal for the poor and needy. Yes, yes, of course. There. The Lord love you, sir. A Merry Christmas to you and your good lady. Thank you. And to you. Bless you, ma'am. The poor, the poor at Christmas. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, don't it? Yeah, I suppose she gets more money that way. Oh, John, don't be like that. Why shouldn't you be shown a bit of respect? True enough. John Horner, plumber and builder by royal appointment. That's me after today's little job. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, they was careful to call me in when her ladyship was out of the way. Couldn't have her clapping her eyes on a working man. But it paid well. Oh, very handsome. Of course, I told them I ought to take less. You never did. That's right, I never did. Get on with you. <laughs> so I reckon we can treat the kids to a present apiece and have enough left over for a bit of something tasty for the table. It's going to be a good Christmas, girl. Well, God bless the aristocracy. May they never learn to do their own plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> John Terence Horner. Who wants to know? Inspector Bradstreet, Scotland Yard. John? What do you want? What I want, my friend, is you. You're under arrest. In here, please, Mr Ryder. Thank you, Inspector. Oh, thank God you're here, mate. He'll tell you, copper. He was the one what engaged me. Well, sir? Oh, yes. That's him, all right. See? I don't know what all this is about, but you've got the wrong man. I was a fool to leave you alone in that room. Do what? I found the jewel case all broken open where you left it. You bloody liar! Ah! Get off! Hey, hey, any more of that and I'll have you chained. <laughs> Understand? I'm not a thief! Clark and Sons Hoban, dealers in gemstones, March 1879. That was ten years ago. I've been straight since then, God's truth. Save your breath, Horner. There's only one thing I want to hear from you. Where have you hidden the Countess of Morcar's blue carbuncle? Good night, landlord. The compliments of the season to you. And to you, Mr. Baker. And to your good lady wife. Oh, uh, yes. I hope you enjoy your Christmas dinner. Assuredly, my good sir. Thanks to you. Good night and good health to you. Good tidings I bring. Good tidings. Take care, Mr. Baker. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Tidings I bring to you and your... Who's there? Come out into the light. I warn you. I have a stick. Hello, my friend. What? Who are you? He doesn't know us, Harry. We're the poor and needy. 
How'd you like to give us a present? You're nothing but a couple of roughs. Get out of my way or I'll summon a constable. Nice hat, this. Oh. Give that back at once. It's too big. My hat. Flies nice, though. <laughs> What's in the parcel, then? No, 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 no. Oh, it's something fresh. No, 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 Let's have a butcher's <laughs> Oh, well, now, that's what I call a handsome present. Go down a tree, that will. Very well. I gave you fair warning, much as I deplore violence. Oh, we'd oh. better give it back to him, Harry. <laughs> He's got a stick. Oh. Take that! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my good God. <laughs> Congratulations, my old chum. Welcome to the wrong side of the law. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's going on there? It's a copper. Oh, no. Ship yourself. Right. That's right. Oh. Get off out of it! Oh, my life! Not you! I didn't mean you, sir! Oh, God! What about your hat? What the devil's this? Good Lord! <laughs> To cut a long story short, Mr. Holmes... Yes, do that by all means, my dear fellow. Yes, well, as I say, to cut a long story short, I brought both items straightway round to you as soon as I could, knowing as how you're always interested in any little problems. I yes, yes, quite right. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, Peterson. It's not too early for you, sir. I mean, I could come back again later on. No, 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 no. <clears throat> uh, uh, very well, Commissioner. Uh, you've told me the story in admirable detail. Pray unveil the trophies. The trophies? Oh, I see what you mean. Well, the yeah, hat, you've seen that. Yes, yes, I've seen that. But what exactly do you have wrapped up in yesterday's Echo, second edition? Well, sir. <laughs> oh, my dear fellow, I congratulate you. That is a most unimpeachable goose. There's no call to congratulate me, Mr. Holmes. It's not mine. Look here. There's a label. For Mrs. Henry Baker. The old gent what ran off last night, mistaking me for a constable, like I said. Well, he must have been taking it home, and you see my problem, sir. Your problem is the price of your honesty, Peterson. A lesser man will be counting his good fortune. Well, that's as maybe. But I know my duty, and that's to return both the hat and the bird. But how, Mr. Holmes, that's the question. How, indeed. Did you sincerely want my advice as to what to do with the goose? Well, yes, sir, I do. Take it home, cook it, and eat it. Mr. Holmes. There are signs that delay would be unwise. Well, perhaps... Most definitely. It's high time for it to fulfil the ultimate destiny of a goose. I trust you and Mrs. Peterson will enjoy it. B but the rightful owners... You may leave him and his hat to me. Good morning to you, Peterson. Well, and to you, sir. And a very Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. I'm rapidly running out of patience with you, Horner. Look, Mr. Bradstreet, if I knew where it was, I'd tell ya. But I've never laid eyes on it. My word on the book. Your word? Can I see my wife? Ah, oh, the prisoner's privileges you're wanting, is it? <sighs> Listen, Horner, the Countess of Morcar's been pulling strings. I've got the Commissioner looking over my shoulder, and I don't like that one little bit. Where's that jewel? A very Merry Christmas to you, Holmes. Uh, thank you, Watson. Oh, cheer up, old man. Oh, it's supposed to be the season of goodwill. Oh, must be close to freezing out there. This is for you. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> My dear fellow. Uh, now, you mustn't open it until tomorrow. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> uh... How is Mrs. Watson? Oh, very well, thank you. In her element. Mrs. Forrester, you remember Mary's old employer. She's staying with us. Yes, and her charming children. Oh, yes, all three of them. <laughs> Congratulations on effecting your escape. Yeah. I hope my motives weren't as transparent to them as they are to you. I do find a little goes a long way, I must say. Gives one a new respect for the patience of womankind. Uh. Uh, I mustn't stay away too long. 
They are guests, after all. And anyway, they are eagerly awaiting the lurid details of your latest triumphs. Well, I'm sure your powers of invention will rise to the occasion. Ah, it's been quiet, is it? What about the Hotel Cosmopolitan robbery? Haven't they called you in on that? I'm afraid you overestimate Scotland Yard's eagerness to admit their inefficiency. <laughs> uh, would you care for a drink? Thank you. Huh. You know, I'd never heard of this blue carbuncle until I read the report in the Times this morning. <laughs> the word has a very different connotation for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you accuse me of single-mindedness. <laughs> Here. Your um, very good health. The compliments of the season. Mm. Uh, sorry. Mm. Uh, a carbuncle is a precious stone, usually a garnet, cut in the en cabochon or dome top shape and invariably deep ruby red in colour. Ah, so that's why this blue specimen is so valuable. Mm, it is unique. Mm. It was found in the banks of the Amoy River in southern China 19 years ago. <laughs> the things you know. It's generally considered to be worth at least £20,000. Good God. Mm. Mm. Thank you. It's been good to see you. But I really ought to be getting along. Perhaps they'll have tired themselves out by now. Can you spare a few moments more? Oh, well, uh, well, no, 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 you're quite right. Domestic responsibilities come first. And it, it's only a very minor investigation. Investigation? <laughs> uh, before I tell you the story, have a look at this. Hmm? Now, what do you think of it? Another gift? Oh, hardly. <laughs> there are those in this bustling capital with good cause to wish me ill, but I fancy most of them have in mind something rather more drastic than insulting me with shabby items of headgear. Well, then, does it have some deadly story linked onto it? Is it the clue that will lead you to the solution of a mystery and the punishment of a terrible crime? No, the matter is a perfectly trivial one. Oh. It's just one of those whimsical little incidents which will happen when you have four million human beings all jostling each other within the space of a few square miles. Yeah, you're right. It is shabby. Uh, look on it, not as a battered billycock, but as an intellectual problem. And what can you deduce about its owner? Deduce? Well, this old felt. Well, you know my methods. Mm, observation and deduction. Well, it's an old... Round hat with a brim. Very good, Watson. <clears throat> a thousand apologies, my dear fellow. Pray continue. Mm. The lining used to be of red silk. No maker's name. Ah, the initials HB scrawled on the inside. Oh. It's cracked, exceedingly dusty, daubed with ink here and there to hide the discoloured patches. And the brim has been pierced for a hat securer, though the elastic's missing. It's a very ordinary black hat. I can see nothing. Oh, on the contrary, Watson. You can see everything, as you just proved, with that excellent description. You fail, however, to reason from what you see. You're too timid in drawing your inferences. Ah, uh, what inferences can you draw? The man is highly intellectual. That's obvious, of course. He was fairly well-to-do, although within the last three years he has fallen upon evil days. He had foresight, but is less now than formerly pointing to a moral retrogression. This, taken with a decline of his fortune, seems to indicate some malign influence at work upon him, possibly drink. This may account also for the obvious fact that his wife has ceased to love him. My dear home. He has, however, retained some degree of self-respect. He's a man who is out of training entirely. His middle age has grizzled hair, which he's had cut within the last few days in which he anoints with lime cream. Oh, also, it's extremely improbable that he has gas laid on in his house. Oh, surely you're joking. Not in the least. But can you truly not see how I arrived at these conclusions? I've no doubt I'm very stupid. Now, oh, what, sir? Well, then, how did you deduce that this man is an intellectual? It's a question of cubic capacity. And I've put, put, put the hat on. Oh, very well. <laughs> you see? <laughs> or rather, you don't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, and a man with so large a brain must have something in it. Uh, the decline of his fortunes? This hat is three years old. These flat brims curled at the edge came in then, and it's a hat of the very best quality. You remark that the lining was once excellent, and look at the band. Uh, ribbed silk. If this man could afford so expensive a hat three years ago, but has had no hat since, then he has assuredly gone down in the world. Perhaps he just prefers wearing an old 
old hat. He may well have a wardrobe full of new ones. A favourite hat would be merely well worn. This one, oh, it's positively repellent. Yes, I noticed that. All right. But what about the foresight and the moral retrogression? Here is the foresight. A hole for the hat securer? They're never sold upon hats. They have to be ordered specially, hence foresight. He went out of his way to take precautions against the wind, and less foresight now than previously because... because he hasn't bothered to replace the broken no, alas, yes. I, And you see that as moral retrogression. A weakening nature. On the other hand, and again, as you pointed out, he's attempted to hide these stains with ink, so he hasn't entirely lost his self-respect. That his middle age, with grizzled hair, lime creamed, and recently cut, you can see from a close examination of the lower lining. And out of training? Ha! Ah, I've got it. He perspires copiously. <laughs> Something else I learned when I had it on. Exactly. And finally, the matter of the gas. Five tallow stains can hardly come by chance. Tallow stains mean tallow candles. Are you satisfied? Ah, uh, you have an answer for everything. Uh, no, wait a minute. How on earth do you know that his wife has ceased to love him? <laughs> when I see you, my dear doctor, with a week's accumulation of dust on your hat, and when Mrs. Watson allows you to go out in such a deplorable state, I shall fear that you also have been unfortunate enough to lose your wife's affections. He might be a bachelor. <laughs> Look at this label. Uh, for Mrs. Henry Baker. Well, it was tied to the leg of the goose. What goose? The goose that Mr. Henry Baker, H.B., was taking home as a peace offering to his wife. Well, I think you might have mentioned that before I started. Miss Holmes! Miss Holmes! Yes, what, what, what have you found this time? No, no, sir. The goose. The goose. Well, what of it, man? Has it returned to life and flapped off through the kitchen window? See here, Mr. Holmes. See what my wife found in its crop. Good heavens, Peterson. Ah, this is treasure trove indeed. <laughs> I suppose you know what you've got. It cuts into glass as though it were putty. It's some sort of precious stone. Uh, it's more than a precious stone, just at the present. It's the precious stone. It's the Countess of Morcar's blue carbuncle. Now listen, I told you last night and I'm telling you again now. I come by that merchandise fair and square and I'll not have anyone saying otherwise. You've got no call snooping round here, prying into my business. Who I sell my goods to, that's private between them and me, see? If you wanted one, you should have got here earlier. Don't you know it's Christmas? Now clear off out of it! Here you are, Peterson. Drink this. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Oh, that's better. Uh, sit there for a moment. Get your breath back. You are sure, Mr. Holmes? You wouldn't say it if you weren't sure, would you? I'm perfectly sure. When the reward was announced today, £1,000. You're a rich man, Peterson. The shock will kill my Elsie. Yeah, you'd better break it to her gently. <laughs> <sighs> you see, Watson, our little deductions have suddenly assumed a much less innocent aspect. Here is the gem. The gem came from the goose, and the goose came from the gentleman with a bad hat and all the other characteristics with which I bored you. And now we must locate him. What were you writing? Uh, found at the corner of Googe Street and the Tottenham Court Road, a goose and a black felt hat. Mr. Henry Baker can have the same by applying at 6.30 this evening at 221B Baker Street. That is clear and concise. Very. Well, hmm? oh, will you see it? Oh, well, he's sure to keep an eye on the papers. Don't forget, he's a poor man. The loss must have been a heavy one. Now, Peterson, are you recovered? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Yes, good. Run down to the advertising agency and have this put in the evening papers. Which one, sir? Uh, oh, the Globe, Star, Pall Mall, St. James's Gazette, Evening News, Standard Echo, and any others that occur to you. Very well, sir. And the stone? Uh, ah, yes. I shall keep the stone. Oh. Oh, and Peterson, stop off on your way back and buy a goose. Yes. We must have one to give to Mr. Baker this evening. Certainly, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Uh, here's a sovereign. Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. A thousand pounds. <laughs> he won't forget this Christmas in a hurry. Holmes? Look at it, Watson. You see how it glints and sparkles. Mm. It is a nucleus and a focus of crime. Every good stone is. They are the devil's pet baits. There have been two murders, a vitriol throwing, a suicide, and several robberies brought about for the sake of this 40 grain weight of crystallized charcoal. Who would think that so pretty a toy would be a purveyor to the gallows and the prison? 
That's a bonny thing. Mm. What will you do with it? Are you going to tell the police that it's been found? Ah, uh, all in good time, my dear doctor. All in good time. Someone to see you, Horner. In here. Alice. You've got two minutes. Remember what I said. Oh, thank God you're here. Oh, John. John. <sighs> what did he mean? What did he say to you? I'm supposed to ask you where you stashed it. So that's why they let you see me. But why don't you tell them, John? What? They say it'll be easier for you if you do. You think I did it? You really think I... <laughs> John! How could you be such a fool? Ah, come in, Doctor. I was beginning to think that you were going to miss the excitement. Unfortunately, my patients haven't yet learned to be ill, only between the hours of 9 and 5.30. <laughs> yeah, some restorative medicine. Oh, thank you. A compliment. Your very good health. Hmm. Ah. Ah, that's excellent. Mr. Henry Baker. Hmm. He's admirably punctual. Do you think he did have anything to do with the robbery? Why oh, speculate. We shall soon know. What about the man Bradstreet's arrested? Is he innocent? I cannot tell. He has a wife and two children. Had a previous conviction. He's continued to protest his innocence. Suppose he's not the thief. What sort of Christmas are his family going to I'm have? interested in facts, not suppositions. Come in. Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Henry Baker, I presume? Correct, sir. Yeah. Pray come in and sit by the fire, Mr. Baker. It's a cold night, and I observe that your circulation is more adapted for summer than for winter. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr... Holmes, uh, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Good evening, sir. Doctor, I saw your advertisement in the Echo, gentlemen. Excellent. Is that your hat, Mr. Baker? Yes, sir. That is undoubtedly my hat. Ah. I thought never to see it again. Or my specimen of answer, answer, domesticus... Ah, yes, your goose. I'm afraid we were compelled to eat it. To eat it? Yes, it would have been no use to anyone had we not done so. Oh, dear. Cheer up, Mr. Baker. Look on the sideboard. The sideboard, sir? Ah. Oh. I presume that that goose, which is about the same weight... And perfectly fresh. ...will answer your purpose equally well? Oh, certainly, certainly. Of course, we still have the feathers, legs, crop, and, um, so on of your own bird, if you so wish. They might serve as relics of my adventure, but beyond that I can hardly see what use the disjecta membra of my late acquaintance are going to be to me. Ah. Ah, here is your hat, then. And here is your bird. Thank you, gentlemen. By the way, Mr. Holmes, I, would it bore you to tell me where you got the other goose from? I'm something of a fowl fancier, and I've seldom seen a better grown bird. Certainly, sir. Uh, there are a few of us who frequent a particular tavern near the British Museum. We are to be found in the museum itself during the day, you understand. Um, studying. Quite so. Yes. Well, this year, our good host, Windigate by name, instituted a goose club by which, on consideration of some few pence every week, we were to receive a bird at Christmas. An admirable arrangement. Indeed, sir. For such a one as I, to whom shillings are not so plentiful as once they were, it was a godsend. And then to have both bird and headgear snatched from my person. Well, enough of that. And what is the name of this excellent hostelry? Ah, uh, yes, the Alpha Inn. Alpha Inn. Thank you. A very good evening to you, Mr. Baker. Good night, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson. Good night. And the compliments of the season to you both. Uh. And to you, sir. Well, it's quite certain that he knows nothing whatsoever about the matter. Oh, poor old soul. Why was he so embarrassed about his studies? Oh, I fancy he values the museum as much for its warmth and its comfort as for its books. <laughs> Now, Doctor, what are your plans for the evening? Is Mrs. Watson standing anxiously in the window awaiting your return to home and hearth? Not now I've told her what happened this morning. She knows you far too well. Tell Mr. Holmes I'd appreciate having you back by the new year, she said. <laughs> Splendid! Come along, then! 
Ladies and gents, what's your pleasure? Two glasses of your best beer, please, Van Lord. Straight away, sir. Your beer should be excellent if it's as good as your geese. My geese? Yes, I was speaking only half an hour ago to Mr. Henry Baker, who was a member of your goose club. Oh, oh I see, yeah. But them's not my geese. Indeed. Who's then? Yes. Good evening. It's a cold night. Hmm. Uh, sold out of geese, I see. Let you have 500 tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, that's no good. Well, he's got some over there. But I was recommended to you. Who by? The landlord of the Alpha Inn. I'll send him a couple of dozen. They're fine birds, too. Uh, now, where did you get them from? Now then, mister, what's all this about? Let's have it straight now. It's straight enough. I should like to know who sold you the geese which you supplied to the Alpha. Well, I'm not going to tell you. I don't know why you should be so warm over such a trifle. Warm? You'd be warm if you were pestered as I am. Pestered, Mr. Brickenry? When I pay good money for a good article, there should be an end of the business. But it's, where are the geese? Who did you sell the geese to and a lot more besides? Well, I have no connection with any other people who have been making inquiries. Makes no odds to me who you're connected with. I didn't tell them, and I won't tell you. Oh, just as you like. Oh, I'm sorry, Watson. The bet's off. The bet? Yeah. yeah oh, right. Too bad. Bet? What bet? Hmm? Uh, oh, I, I have a fibre on it with my friend here that the bird I ate was country bread. Isn't that right, Watson? Absolutely. And I say I know a town-bred bird when I taste one. Got it from the Alpha, did you? From Mr. Windergate's own hands. Then you lost your fibre. Those geese was town bred. They were nothing of the kind. I say they were. I don't believe you. Holmes, don't be a sore loser. He's always like this. Won't take anyone's word for anything. Please, Watson. Mr. Breckenbridge, you'll never persuade me that those birds were town bred. You want to bet? No, I've just been taking your money. How much? A sovereign. Done. Now look here, Mr. Coshaw. This is a list of my suppliers. Country folk first, then town. Then, what does that say at the top of that page? Uh, Mrs. Oakshot, 117 Brixton Road. Town, right. What's the latest entry? Uh, 23rd of December, 24 geese at 7 and 6. Thank you, and underneath that? Sold at 12 shillings each to... Mr. Windigate, Alpha Inn, Bloomsbury. Right. What do you say now? Oh, good night to you. You see, terrible loser. Holmes, I say, what about my fiver? <laughs> oh, well done, Holmes. Oh, oh, thank you for your contribution. It's a masterly performance. Oh, uh, your after-dinner recitation tomorrow should be excellent. What is it to be? Billy's Rose, Christmas Day in the workhouse. Oh, please. <laughs> it was the night before Christmas. Was the night? All right, all right. <laughs> Look, how did you know that that would work? When you see a man with whiskers of that cut and a sporting paper protruding out of his pocket, you can always draw him with a bet. Ah. Do we have to go out of Brixton? How much longer is this trail going to stretch? Man, Watson, a man will certainly get seven years penal servitude unless we can establish his innocence. Oh, so you do think he's innocent? Well, it's possible. Right, I've had enough of you and your oh, geese. Moment, if look. you show your face here again, I'll set the dog on you to see if I don't. But all I want to know is... Did I buy them off you? Did I sell them to you? No, of course not. Then it's none of your business, is it? Now be off. But Mrs. Oldshot told me to ask you. You can ask the King of Prussia for all I care. I've had enough. Now are you going? Don't hit me. Don't hit me. I didn't mean no harm. Honestly, I didn't. It's just that one of them was mine. That's all. Mine. Oh. Good evening. Who are you? What do you want? I couldn't help overhearing. I think I could be of assistance to you. You? Who are you? How could you know anything about it? It is my business to know what other people don't know. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Looks very seasonal in this weather. You look cold, sir. Perhaps that accounts for your silence during the cab journey. Well, I... Uh, that is to say... Quite. Now then, pray tell me who it is that I have the pleasure of assisting. My name is John Robinson. No, no, no. The real name. It's always awkward doing business with an alias. 
Oh, yes, do please take a seat. Uh, you too, Watson. And Thank I'll, you. I'll just put on my slippers. And uh, isn't this cosy? Uh, oh, I believe you are going to tell us your name. My real name is James Ryder. Precisely so, Watson. You saw the account in the papers. You're the head attendant at the Hotel Cosmopolitan. Yes, sir. Yes, I am the business there. It, uh, it upset me terribly. I'm sure it has. Now, you're interested in some geese? Oh, yes, sir. Or rather, I fancy in one particular goose, uh, white with a black bar across its tail. Oh, sir. Can you tell me where it went to? It came here. Here? Here. And a most remarkable bird it proved. It laid an egg after it was dead. Oh. Hmm. The bonniest, brightest little blue egg that ever was seen. The game's up, Ryder. No! No! Get a hold up, oh. man! Oh. Be in the fire. That's it, Watson. Oh. Give him an arm back into his chair. Oh. Easy now. Oh. Look at him. <coughs> He's not got enough blood in him for felony. What a shrimp it is, to be sure. Give it some brandy, Doctor. There you are. Here. Thank you. <coughs> now, Ryder, I have almost every link in my hands and all the proofs which I could possibly need. You had heard of this blue gemstone of the Countess of Morcars and contrived... It was her ladyship's waiting maid told me about it. Cathy. Catherine Cusack. She put me up to it. She said if I got it, she would... She would... Yes. So what did you do? Somehow or other, you knew that this man Horner had been concerned in some such matter before. You made some small job in my lady's room and sent for him. Then you rifled the jewel case, raised the alarm, and had this unfortunate individual arrested. Oh, for God's sake, have mercy! Think of my father, my mother! It would break their hearts! For goodness sake, man! I never went wrong before. I never will again. I swear it. I'll swear it on a Bible. Oh, don't bring it into court. Say you won't. Get back of your chair! It's very well to cringe and crawl now, but you thought little enough of this poor man Horner in prison for a crime of which he knew nothing. I will fly, Mr. Holmes. I'll leave the country, sir. Then the charge against him will break down. Mm, we'll talk about that. But first, I want to hear a true account of this matter. How came the stone into the goose and the goose onto the open market? Hmm? Tell us the truth, for there lies your only hope of safety. Oh, Mr. Holmes, sir. Get on with it. Well, it happened just like you said. As soon as Horner had gone, I smashed to open the jewel case and got the stone. Then I ran out to the street and found a constable. When we got back to the hotel, the old lady, that is, her ladyship, had got back and was screaming the place down. Of course, the constable wasn't good enough for her. She had to have an inspector at the very least. A friend Bradstreet of B Division. Yes. Proper put the wind up me, he did. Made me identify Horner. Where was the gem while you were perjuring yourself at Scotland Yard? In my pocket. As soon as I could get away, I hightailed it for my sister's house in Brixton. Mrs Oakshaw. That's right. All the way there, every man I met seemed to me to be a policeman or a detective ready to put the finger on me. The sweat was pouring down my face by the time I got there. Why, Jem, hello. Hello, Maggie. Whatever's the matter with you, Jem? Are you sick? Uh, there's been some trouble at work, Maggie. What have you been and done? Nothing. It's just, uh, just upset me, that's all. Well, you better come in. Come on. Right, yes. I told Maggie I wanted to get a bit of air. And I went through to the backyard and tried to think what it would be best to do. I sat there, looking at the geese that my sister fattens up for the market, and suddenly an idea came into my head which showed me how I could beat the best detective that ever lived. Come here, you... Stand still, you stupid bird! Ah, now I've got you. Ah, keep still, blaster. That's it. Now, look what your Uncle Jem's got for you, then. I caught one of the geese, a fine, big one with a barred tail. 
and I thrust the stone as far down its throat as I could reach with my finger. Then the bird gave a gulp, and I felt it pass down into its crop. That's right. Let's see him find it in there, then. Jim, what are you doing with that bird? What? Oh, oh, no! What on earth were you up to? Uh, well, uh, well, well, you said you'd give me one for Christmas. I was just feeling which one was the fattest. Oh, we've got one set aside for you. Jem's bird, we call it. Oh, but, we've been feeding it up special. But that's... Uh, what? Uh, well, well uh, if it's all the same to you, Maggie, I'd rather have that one. The one with the barred tail. But yours is a good three pound heavier. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I really like that one. Well, if you're sure. Yeah, and, and I'll take it now. But, oh, very well. Kill it and take it with you. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Come here, you brute. Well, I did what she said, Mr. Holmes, and carried the bird off to my place in Kilburn. Then I got a knife and cut it open. My heart turned to water. There was no sign of the stone. Jim, whatever now? Excuse me, Maggie. Well, Jim! No! Oh, no! <laughs> They'd gone. They'd all gone to Breckenridge's of Covent Garden. And there had been more than one with a barred tail. There were two. Maggie told me she couldn't ever tell them apart. I went to Breckenridge as fast as I could run, but not one word would he tell me about where they'd gone. I went back again and again, and to Maggie's too, to see if she knew. She thinks I'm going mad. Sometimes I think she's right. And now I'm a branded thief without hardly having touched the wealth I sold my character for. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> Get out. What, sir? Get out. Oh, heaven bless you. No more words. Get out. <laughs> I... <laughs> Well, well. My dear Holmes, I am not retained by the police to supply their deficiencies. I suppose I am compounding a felony, but it's just possible that I am saving a soul. <laughs> Send him to jail now, and you make him a jail bird for life. Besides, it's the season of forgiveness. Holmes, you amaze me sometimes. Hmm? I'm delighted to hear it. <laughs> Come on, get your hat. Get up, Horner. Now what? More questions? <sighs> You're free to go. What? Come on, come on. But, but what's happened? You've got this gentleman to thank. Good evening, Honor. Do I know you, sir? My name would perhaps be familiar to you. Well, then. It's of no importance. I suggest you leave before the worthy inspector changes his mind. Uh, yes, yes, right. <laughs> God bless you, sir, whoever you are. Constable, yeah. take uh, Mr. Horner up and give him his belongings. Sir, this way. Mr. Holmes, I swear I still don't know how you persuaded me to do that. Really, Brad Street, you have the stone, you have the commissioner's good grace, and you have my assurance that I'm on the trail of the true thief. What more do you want? Well, a little hard and fast evidence wouldn't come amiss. My dear fellow, it is Christmas. My apologies for keeping you waiting, Doctor. <laughs> it was worth it to see the expression on Horner's face when he came out. Well done, Holmes. No. No, I mean it. There he was, off back to his family and friends. Did my heart good. I await with interest your heart-ringing prose version. Oh, really, old man, can't you let it drop for a second? Well, I must be getting home. It's certainly been a Christmas Eve to remember. 
And tomorrow, I dare say, I'll even find the children tolerable. Oh, well. Good night, then. Watson, Wade. Holmes? Good Lord. I had no idea it was so late. <laughs> Early. Watson. Holmes, this is damnably rude of me, but... Well, I know you dine very late, as a rule. Absolutely true, Doctor. Are you about to tell me that I'm ruining my digestion? <laughs> Actually, I was... I was wondering if Mrs. Hudson might stretch to providing for two. For two? Oh, Mary will have gone to bed hours ago, the whole householder. I realise it's a dreadful imposition. I believe I can tolerate it. Thank you, Holmes. Thank you, my friend. Come along, Doctor. Faces to the north and quick march. <laughs>